Alright, I am excited for this. So basically, on this channel, I've claimed to be a developer, but one thing is missing with all the games and videos that I've made so far. And that is that I don't even have something that took me over a month to make. Or what I truly want, a special Steam release. But to get a Steam release, I've got to make a good game, as I'm not trying to make shovelware, at least not on purpose. Even though my other games might. Uh, yeah. So the plan for this video is to get started on a project that is good enough to get on Steam. Which is kind of a big undertaking for me. Fortunately for me, I already had the idea of what game I was going to make, and it was going to be a 2D platformer. Preferably it was going to be action based as well. Now, going into this, one thing that was going to be important for this game was the mascot. As I wanted something cool and potentially iconic. Just like some of the most iconic IPs in the world. But, I suppose if one of my favourite games literally uses a cup, then anything can be a mascot. And if anything can be a mascot, then I'm testing that fact with my mascot. As I made this leafy guy. I'm hating, but I do like this leafy guy. And, it is pretty simple. And just like the game, I'm trying to keep everything simple. As well as that, a bit of lost media would be this blue guy, who I didn't think could be the main character, but could be a sidekick or a player too in the future. I opened the Godot project knowing this time things would be serious and got to work on some basic movement featuring the leaf guy which I think I forgot to code as I have no idea why this movement ever existed. Then after tidying this up I added an RPG which you could pick up. I forgot why I did this but at the time I thought it would have been fun so just added it. Which brings me on to the game's inspirations. Which, the biggest of them all is Piku Niku, as I thought the vector art styles were very similar to what I usually make, and just wanted the simplicity of its fun and its writing. So that may explain some of the simpler art you will see later on. Which, continuing on the fun idea, is why I added an RPG out of all the weapons I could've, as it was going to be the funnest to shoot around uh, when I got it working. Um, as you can see, the previous pickup system was just a bit goofy, so I got it attached to the leaf's body. This system was also pretty universal as well. As far as I know, this could work on any weapon and can be expanded for a lot more weapons. Although there were bugs of course, like this RPG which was locked, uh, just being out of reach. Afterwards, I worked on shooting the RPG with a projectile system. Then, I added gravity. This is because I wanted to have two different sets of bullets. Ones that have gravity and ones that shoot straight. Which then creates an interesting choice as Gravity guns don't have range, but they can hit a lot more targets by dipping past obstacles and choosing the right gun for the right occasion might be an interesting choice to make. Secondly, another reason why I added gravity bullets is because they're just fun and satisfying. But to add to that, you actually need skill to use them, as you're not just clicking on the enemy. The RPG also features one of the cooler features in the game, and that is that it reloads on the floor despite not being held. So, as I discovered, you can switch between two to kind of increase the shooting rate as one reloads on the floor while you shoot the other one. And, I suppose this blue guy did make a return, as he now features, but just as a placeholder enemy. Right now, he really can't do anything, but he can point his RPG and pump fake his shot. Then, I gave it the ability to shoot, although he's literally suffering from Stormtrooper aim. Next, Leaf Guy got some animations which includes his head turning. The stick was then added to join the RPG as weapons you can have, and this time it shoots the other straight bullets I mentioned. Then to the right of the blue guy was this heart NPC, which I haven't done anything to, but just stands there watching. Following this, the next big feature I added was that enemies you kill drop their weapons. Well, game devs know I didn't just add it like that, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, ouch. But, they do drop a pickable version of the gun that they were using. The reason for this feature is that I wanted all the guns to be universal, and if you see an enemy with a cool weapon, you can kill them and get that weapon for yourself. As well as that, there could be some tacticalness to what gun you choose, and picking up the right weapon might be important. This also matches with choosing the correct bullets for your situation. Since one of the weapons was an RPG, I realised it was missing the explosion. So, I started adding that with this cool prototype effect, which also has this unintentional piercing effect, which is a cool idea for other weapons in the future. Afterwards, I gave it a small explosion animation, 
showing the range of enemies it can hit, which also adds another dynamic to the weapon selection, as some can explode which is useful for multiple enemies, giving more emphasis on the choice of gun. The background also changed a bit. So you are now within this cave with a couple of oh, details in the background. I personally like the background but don't love it and I'm not too sure whether it looks good or not as it could be too simple or just crap. It features a couple points with heights and then this acid lake which was going to be a future obstacle as this is still somewhat a platformer and maybe in this game there will be parkour. I also updated the explosion graphic to look like a fire. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I also sorted out an interesting problem that occurs with gravity and enemies. And that is that if they are holding an RPG, they can't really just look at the player and shoot as gravity will always make it miss. So instead what I've had to do is make it aim a bit upwards depending on the distance away from the player to get a bit more accuracy. This was definitely more hope for the best code, but it works for now. Which, if I was the expert, I could eventually add aimbot to these enemies and predict movements similar to how Minecraft skeletons have aimbot, but I'm not. So, to help with the struggle, I added some randomness, which means if you stand still, you might get hit or you might not. Meaning, for some enemies, you're truly never safe. Um, although, I'm not too sure how fun it is to play against something random like this, as it is out of your control, so it might stay in, it might not. As much as I keep talking about what this game could be as it's only starting, it also has a bit of a bullet hell potential which I discovered, which is one of my favourite type of games. This is because once there is two enemies, as I discovered, dodging bullets becomes a lot more tricky, and especially considering there are two different types of bullets, you need to make sure you're accounting for how they act. The next thing to happen for this game was its name, which I'm going to call it Jab, with two Bs, which is super random. but. The origin story for this was that I was attempting to make some music for the game. Like every producer with no naming system, I generally just slapped my keyboard to save it as some randomness. And this was the name of the song that was saved. And I thought it was tough, so the game is now called Jab. Which makes the Leaf Guy Jab now, I guess. Uh, it's kind of idiotic, but whatever, I really like this name. Uh, yeah. Then it was time for the next weapon to join the stick weapon and the RPG. Which would be a fishbowl. I actually don't know how this got through. Uh, looking back, I genuinely have no idea how this got added to the game. As it's just a bit goofy. It's, it's just it's like kind of bad. Um, but I suppose that's the point. At the time, I thought the idea of a fish launcher was cool. And a fish launcher could just be a fishbowl. So why not? And as you can see right now, it works perfectly. I had decided it was going to have gravity, but every time it touches a surface, it drips. Which, you can drip off the ceiling to get an explosive bomb. Uh, but nah. This drip effect was not intentional. Um, it was another effect I wanted. Another type of bullet. The bouncing bullet. It did take a bit, but the fish can now bounce. I say this is a different type of bullet. However, what I mean is more of like a bonus effect to a bullet as this has to combine with another type of bullet I previously explained. Which to explain in this case, it is a gravity bullet, but this time I added bouncing on top of it. But could also hopefully be the previous stray bullets, but also bouncing with it. The fish has three bounces before it explodes, or it can just get a direct hit. And what's even more interesting about this is that the fish wasn't meant to explode, and this is something I took away from it. In theory, there could be a gun that's bouncing, has gravity, and also explodes. Which kind of just sounds like a grenade launcher. But, uh, yeah. However, with all this hype around the combos, I do have to stress I don't believe in my coding skills. And that bouncing is barely held together, and the fish speed is super slow, as otherwise it constantly breaks. In which, it already breaks. Um... It is very buggy and kind of so bad it might not make the final game as it's just like that. And just shooting into a wall guarantees a problem so, um, I don't know, yeah bouncing bullets are not good. Anyway, I was tired of looking at blue guys as enemies and decided to add the first proper enemy you can encounter in this game. And this is Ceiling Rock and that's his actual name. At least in every file it is. I might give him an actual name, uh, probably won't. 
yeah, no. Anyway, in the game, it thinks it can camouflage and sits on the ceiling and tries to ambush the player with a fishbowl, making it rain fishes. Now, at this point, this was really a bullet dodging mission. With this many things to track, with this many different movements. Also, I had given the bouncing bullet specifically to the enemy on the ceiling as if they miss, their projectile will bounce and have a higher chance of hitting as otherwise it's pretty useless and just goes out into the distance. As interestingly, dodging projectiles vertically is a lot easier than dodging horizontally. Although, at this point, the enemies do not need to be any more difficult. Like, yeah, I don't know. Then, the map's quality drastically increased. Nah. <laughs> but this was just a result of me trying to increase the map size with a bit more level to the right. And that in the background is a new potential enemy, the miner. And next to it is a mining bucket. The miner is a miner as the cave we are supposed to be in is a miner's cave. However, the biggest problem I faced was devastating. Basically, the miner and a big portion of the level I had was on this file that got corrupted. And I haven't worked on this game really since, so I'm not sure how much is possible to save, but this was pretty rough. Kind of small update that, for the most part, it's all good. I've, I still lost stuff, but it's not really game breaking as I thought. But ignore that dark sign as I'm pretty proud of what I have so far, or at least the ideas I have. The problem is just whether I'm going to reach them. And I am hopeful with this devlog the game will be more likely to complete, although there's no guarantees. And to be honest, I thought I'd make a game that would take me a short amount of time, and this game honestly might take a while. And considering how bad I am at fixing bugs, it might take longer or turn out for the worst with bugs. I obviously didn't show it in this vid, but there were a lot of bugs making this. The pickup system is air, and the bouncing bullets are very questionable. The road to steam is certainly bumpy, and I haven't even worked on this game in a month and a bit when I'm writing this, and like two months when I'm recording this, and then like three months when I'm editing this. So maybe I'm already cooked, but I believe. Also, working on the soundtrack for the game is cool, although if this game gets big enough, I might get it externally. I'm yapping a bit, there might be a wishlist link if you're watching this a year later, so maybe wishlist or join the Dizzy or sub up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. Oh, maybe move the update to the end. Oh, I kind of want to add a joke to the end. <laughs>